It's 18 degrees Celsius. Yay! Cloudy. Feels like 18, it says. See the date. The 27th of January. Cloudy. Beautiful. Nice. Cool. It says low chance of precipitation tonight. Relative humidity is 89%. Cool, at least. It's cool. And it's humid. So if the sun ever comes out, all that water in the ground is just going to rise up to the top and it's going to be like a sauna. Ah, oh, isn't that lovely? Oh, love, love, love the cool, cool weather. Uh, my Cal and Koei all of a sudden have sort of greened up. I was looking at the other one. So this one has been here sort of a little bit protected. This is Kalankoi Fitschenkoi. So the variegation is not showing right now because it's sleeping. See that yellow one there. So this is, oh look down here, variegated. This is actually a beautiful plant in autumn when they start to wake up. So right now summer, we still have another month. So February is still autumn. I mean, it's still summer. Autumn. See, I'm already waiting for autumn because autumn, the color is just, just beautiful. So anyway, so we still have the last month of summer, so they're still going to go to sleep. If we do get cool temperature in... Okay, I'll just show you the other Kalankowis that are asleep. It's almost dark. I forget to get the footage earlier. So now I'm adding on to it so you can tell I'm editing it. It's about 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock now at night time here. And this Fitschenkoi here, look how beautiful the color, but this is asleep. This is night-night, sleepy time. So they're not awake yet. See how the yellow is just so beautiful. It's such a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful plant. And I actually got them all over the place. And it's all sort of gangly, like stemmy uh, looking. Normally I just chop, chop, chop. Uh, when the weather cools down, of course, and propagate them. But at the moment, they're just asleep. So no amount of, look at that beautiful, no amount of watering or fertilizing or whatever you do to it, it will still sleep. So when, when they are dormant, don't keep watering and watering and watering because they are going to die. They're going to rot. Well, somehow, I haven't had one rot yet, but because I have a free draining soil, but I would assume that if you do keep giving them water when they're asleep, eventually, probably, they will rot. Hang on, this, this little... I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I just killed the spider again. Okay, let's continue to the other Kalankowis. So, these are mostly my Kalankowis here that are sleeping right now. They're not doing much growing when it's hot. So even this one, this Kalankowi Panda, I'm so proud of this one because I've grown this from one single leaf. It's called Kalankowi Tomentosa Bunny Ears. And I also bought another one that says Pussy's Ears. Why? <laughs> I think, I don't know. But they're all Kalankowi Tomentosa. This is, um, what are you? Dorothy Brown, this one. And then this is Melotti Kalankowi. And I've got the white one, the um, panda, white panda ears inside. But anyway, they're all beautiful. But you get silver and brown and sort of mid tone. And that one is what are you? Kalankowi Behartii. Okay, so Behartii. So this one has got funny shaped leaves. So you see that? And it's, oh, just went spiky. It's not as fluffy and it's variegated. And thank you, Lynn. My friend Lynn gave this to me and now it's flowering. I should really remove the flower stalk, but it doesn't matter. They don't die down. That one is flowering too. Or she got a flower stalk. And see those babies down there. So you pluck the leaves in autumn, or end of summer. And then you just, uh, I just leave it there. This is actually, I just threw it in there. And so they start growing. There you go, hang on, I'm gonna... See that there? Oopsie. See, that's the mother leaf. That's the baby now that's growing from the mother leaf. There's no roots. Some of them's got roots, like that one, and a mealybug. See, oh, sorry. See that white fluff there? That's a mealybug. 
anyway I do love my Kalan Kowi put it this way I love all plants there's very very few plants that I hate because hate is not a good is not a good thing like you probably dislike them but you don't hate them don't hate spread love oh look I have another <laughs> Crassula astraea. Come here, come here, come here. Okay, where can I put you? Because I don't really want you to grow anywhere. I'll put you where this um, Portulacaria afra variegata is. And, oh, yeah, sorry. That one is just so pretty, isn't it? My Calicia. Oh, look how thick. I can't even. Okay, I'll take it out. So this is one of my propagated babies. And look how thick. Mummy's over there hiding. Here you go. Mommy is not as uh, colorful because she's over here in the shaded area. All, most, or a lot. <laughs> I can't say all. I'm just saying all and then they're not flowering. So the caranculated, so my freelies and caranculated. Oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, look at those bumps. My caranculated ones are alive. They love summer. They love the heat but you have to give them the right amount of water as well and look at the poor little spider hiding there i'm sorry spider i'm not gonna kill you okay i'll leave you but we need to inspect the flowers see the flower stalk the inflorescence flower stalk you look how long 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 it is anyway so this one you can choose to remove this if you like or you can leave it but if you leave it, know that they are prone to aphids and mealybug if you have the flower stalk growing like that. But what would be the reason why? Oh, look here. So aphids, aphids. There you go. So there's the aphids. And it's just starting to uh, reproduce in there. So anyway... The flowers are for reproduction. This is the uh, sexual organ of the plant. In this case, this is, are you Paul Bunyan? I think, yes, you are. Hang on. I'm just going to go have a look at the label here. Oh, my goodness. Yep, it's Paul Bunyan. Okay, so Paul Bunyan is having flower, but because this flower is supposed to... Uh, see, it's all going leggy, but it's so beautiful. I just don't want to cut it because I do really like that gangly look. But anyway, it looks so natural. Now, this flower, if I remove it, so it will save my plant from being attacked by pests. But the good thing about keeping the flower stalk is that I can grow, see these uh, leaves here? Normally, I would collect the leaves like so and grow it from that. So as long as it's intact, you have a 40% chance of that taking uh, root or growing a pup and then having a baby. But then I saw something. I'm just wondering if... No, it's not. So there's all roots there. I thought there might be a small green baby there, but it's not. Anyway, that's the reason why I keep them. But otherwise... You'd want to get rid, so I'm just throwing them there. I only keep up to a certain, um, when they get too old, put it that way. When you get too old, see there's still a little bump, then they're no good. They're not going to grow. It's always uh, the young ones. But then now this one doesn't have any bump, so I'm going to leave that there. So I'm only taking those ones with a bump. And then in here, this one is Poro, Echeveria Poro. This one, it doesn't show bumps until they're much, much older. So even this one, this is still a young plant. It's going to take about three years before they grow a bump. So this one is a bit over two years now, or almost two years uh, what year are we now? See, I don't even know what year it is. So about two years, this one now. And they just start showing some bumps. But as they mature, the bumps will grow. So it's like this one. There was very little bumps on this Bacarus. Yes, it is a Bacarus. So I have a name on the side, see? That's why I know. So Bacarus here 
is oh look at the caranculation isn't that beautiful i don't know some people probably might find it ugly but i do find it very interesting so it's just it's not a plain jane anymore it becomes it tells a story let's go look at something in the faces of the caranculation we might see some forms or something or oh, that one what do you see on that one okay i see <laughs> a cloud <laughs> and now this one what do you look like? Oh, la it looks like a fish. Look at that. Can you see that? Look at the mouth of the fish. <laughs> are we talking about succulents or are we talking... Oh, hang on. I'm jumping again. Because this one, look at this. This is so interesting. I just noticed this one. See how that bump sort of grows there? Look at that. And then when they get bigger, they become like this. It's like an independent... Um, uh, what do you call that? A little tube, like under the sea. You know those tubes that uh, you've seen on National Geographic or documentaries or Discovery documentaries? That one is like those down deep in the ocean where they have those, I don't know what you call it, but anyway, they normally spurt out like clouds of smoke. That's what it looks like to me. And they are just so interesting. Anyway, so that's why. And this one is probably different to the bump or verrugas. This is verrugas. So I don't know what the difference is, but they're all just very bumpy. I will figure out what the difference. Oh, this one is like a crested shape. Look, see? There's a pattern as so it's sort of you go a highway in the middle and then you just push the dirt over on each side. <laughs> and this one is just clumped up and little uh, chubby type. We lost our thought, didn't we? Okay, so that's it. The flower, I leave it uh, because of that to reproduce. So that is their sexual organ or their mommy belly so they can have babies. So if they get pollinated by insects or bees or even ants so the ants can crawl from one flower here to the next one and then they would cross pollinate that they would take the pollen via their legs and transfer go down and go up here and then go here cross pollinate this this little stem they can cross pollinate each other i assume some do but some don't but then sometimes this one might go over here and cross pollinate that and vice versa it's the same thing as flies or bees uh, flying from one uh, flower to another to pollinate last night rained we had rain for a brief moment we did have some precipitation or rain dropping but it wasn't enough and i pulled out one of my pots you can see there was a pot that used to live there and i pulled it out and underneath was all dry so i drowned this pot here has got this calamansi tree which is just there's a few fruit in here but it's all dried up because of course not enough water it's just dependent on the rain, but uh, I can't do that, so I have to hand water it. So, uh, hang on, my air plant is dead. Are you still, oh, it's still alive. So I've got an air plant hiding here. Oh, look, it's still alive. Half of it is alive and the other half is dead, but it doesn't matter, we leave it there. And that one needs to be cleaned up. Okay, so do I leave the flowers? Um, yes, because I forget. <laughs> <laughs> like these ones I forgot to remove them but normally I would take them out so this is what are you this is have got a very difficult name that one is an um, albicans it's a type of albicans but it's not albicans it's another type of albicans something with a K I will hang on I'll reach out for the name there you go Kessel Ringiana. Kessel Ringiana. Oh, elegance variety. Javiria elegance. Kessel Ringiana. That's a really hard name to say. Kessel Ringiana. Okay, now this one, I have to wait till it dries up and I just go. This is my Victorator. And that one, you can go, and if it doesn't go, you break it down there because it's unsightly and more unsightliness. Okay, there you go. So, oh, my kante over here, this is what I want to show you. See, the house, I was watering my babies last night, even though it was raining again. 
I'll just show you the damage of that we had reached 38 degrees Celsius yesterday, by the way, and then it rained. Oh, Elki, look at your fat, fat, fat. Look how fat this cactus is. Oh my goodness. It's just so fat. Okay, that's the one. Jemmy Jem gave me. Look, it's got a baby. The baby's already grown and got attacked by snail. Actually, the snails did that. But now, look at this big fat thing. Oh, so fat. Keep growing. Oh, I'm not pushing you down. Go up. Go up. Go over here, and I'm going to show you a... Oh, this one's um, painted frills. This is Echeveria painted frills. It does have beautiful flowers. So they do flower. Echeveria flowers in different times. They flower through winter, uh, autumn, spring, summer. Now this one is my Kante. Look how beautiful this Kante is that has survived the frost in this position. So last year, what did you have? Minus six, minus seven. Hang on, I just removed this one. Uh, the dry leaves, you gotta take it off because it's not good. Uh, okay, we're gonna have some insecto living there. Okay, insects. Okay, okay, we put it in my stash. I'm trying to move slowly so that way it's not <laughs> like that. <laughs> now, this one has been attacked by aphids. Look how much aphids in that inflorescent. Look at that. Oh, now. I just saw this yesterday, so I thought to myself, should I remove it? No, not after I do a video. And look at the aphids crawling up, down, I mean crawling down there. I don't know if you can see that, all those black spots, like sesame seeds. And now it's gone to the leaves here, look. Ooh, ooh, it dropped on my other plant here. Look at the ants. They're the culprits. They're the ones who's bringing in all this. The ants don't eat the nectar. Oh, they actually eat the nectar that the aphids produce they produce this sugar so now i'm gonna break this oopsie it doesn't want to break i need my there you go thank you very much gentle and we throw it in the bin we dispose of it because we don't want it spreading oh look how thick this is now oh my orostakis or dance cap chinese dance caps but it's orostakis oh look when they grow roots like that, we have to take this off. See the little root? And we dig it up here now that I've got all that <laughs> snail pellets. Uh, oh, here are more. See, that's the best time to propagate them when they have roots. And there you go. So they'll fill up this whole thing because... If they can't set root, they are just going to dry up. So, you need to have some soil contact. And I will water this later on. Because that part there, even though, so you can see the rain on this side, no rain on that side. And then this one now, it's just dropping. We go there. It fell off from this. What are you? Um, uh, Crasula, you don't have a name, okay, because I, I didn't get a name when I bought this one, but I have one somewhere with a name of this, but anyway, it's beautiful. Oh, hang on, let's go. Do I have one or another one here that I'm bonsifying? Look at that. It's going to be like a little bonsai tree. See, I'll find out the name. Hang on. Uh, icy green and oh this oh my goodness this is this is roulette are you roulette yeah echeveria roulette and looks so fat and pink that always stays pink and where's the other one uh, this one is different this is latte rose and look how pink that is. Where's my latte rose over there? The mummy. Okay, this is a polydonis, another polydonis. Um, and another ugly polydonis, that one. So I don't really like polydonis because they're boring most of the time of the year. They're boring. When uh, summertime is when the color shows up. So like this one. 
Okay, so the Polydonis, oh look how pretty, isn't it? Look pretty. Some variety, uh, there's so many hybrids of them, but some, uh, some variety of Polydonis or hybrids of Polydonis do grow beautifully. So this one, when they go yellow like that, they tend to die off. So they become mummy. So this is the mummy and these two are the babies now. And once they put out babies, the mummy I find dies. So if you have a variegated Polydonis, which I used to have, that variegation disappeared. The mummy died and took the variegation with her and left me with boring babies with no variegation. So that is the case with the Polydonis. I've only noticed that with a couple of plants. So this one is a Grapsevaria Margaret Ripon. Margaret Ripon, so this is the mummy. The center one is the mummy plant. And this, all the sides now are the babies. So this is also a Margaret Repin. It's actually a beautiful, beautiful plant. But hang on. But, if you like white. <laughs> Just a but. Anyway, this one now, after putting out all these babies, the mummy just sort of withers and dies. And look, so it just, well, probably that got attacked by mealybug, but this also grows really quickly. So this one, this is probably an old leaf. It's not going to grow anymore. But anyway, we'll open it up. So that way the baby can breathe. We let the baby breathe. And now the baby, I lost a leaf from the baby. This leaf will grow. So if I leave it there, that will grow. Okay, drop down there. We'll throw you down here. Okay, there's so many things to show you. I've got so many things to show you. But anyway, so this one now, Margaret Ripon, Graptovaria Margaret Ripon. I'll show you another. That's the baby still. The mummy, the original mummy I had is here. And look, it's doing the same thing. That's the mummy plant and another mummy plant there. Once they go yellow, they would just disappear. So you're best just pulling them apart although they're quite easy to propagate so all of this now this is look all the leaves there you see those oh, hang on so they're quite easy to propagate so do you see those leaves there those ones they're all leaf propagated so even that maybe this one i suspect would be leaf propagated some of them sprouted out from the mummy but most of them are leaf propagation of course most of them as well from the mummy but i did throw um into this container a lot of the babies but anyway oh my goodness so the first of august or july sorry uh 2019 is when this one was propagated uh how old are you now uh 1920 <laughs> I am lost with the date. So it's a year and a half. Is that right? Okay. Yes, you were a year old last year. And then in a few months time, you're going to be two years old. So this beautiful, beautiful Echeveria Black Prince. Anyway, uh, this is my um, leaf propagated Echeveria Monroe. Now I'm going to show you a really beautiful Monroe. Oh, by the way, yeah, I forgot. I was going to show you the damage of the heat wave that we had. So that got damaged by the heat wave, my ebony here. But only because it's really, really soft. That's really, really dry. So when they're dry, they're really, really dry. They haven't got protection. They haven't got enough uh, liquid insulation inside them to sort of repel the heat or protect or cool down basically so they sort of dried up that's that's dried up but anyway it's still alive so it's not really no big drama and then this one so you can see the tips my ebony it's oh so beautiful you say because it's black that's actually burnt that's burnt from the sun because this is really really light see look at that so this the damage that's a da sun damage or sunburn so sunburn again here that part this corner here sunburn uh let's go see any dark spots those ones sunburn so if uh you don't water they will get sunburn if you water at the wrong time they will also get sunburn so if on extreme weather you're best having a 50% shade cloth where I have here. All the plants that was in my 50 zone or 50% UV shade cloth area, 
did not get damaged by the sun at all. Although in saying that, it's so irrelevant because there's only a couple of them. So of this lot here, those are slightly sun damaged, my little Gilva, which by the way, in summer, you're best keeping the Gilva somewhere well, I kept this in the 50 zone before, and it was all nice and pink. Now, I put it out in the sun, it got bleached. It went all white on me, not white, but lighter colored. So, I think I'm going to put it back in the 50 zone. Now, this one here is, you can see the damage on my Ichok. So, my Ichok over there is shaded. It's still beautiful as ever. No sunburn, but this Ichok here which is exposed you can see the sun's the, the sun damage here sunburn one two three four five maybe that one got attacked by a bird before as well so that's the sun damage anyway and this one is my setosa variety the minuta here which hang on let me feel this yes i did water it i watered it the other night and intentionally just to see what would happen to to uh, that one because the other one behind me. Okay, so this one is still get certain amount of Sun uh, Only uh, it's protected as well, but the middle part. That's the mummy plant uh, Got damaged, but this one came from my covered area Over there so from there from the covered area behind those blue or under that uh, and then I moved it over here and once moved here, uh, did not acclimatize. I haven't acclimatized it slowly than I usually do. And then the top got burned. It doesn't matter because lots of babies have grown. So the mummy is a good excuse now to chop that and then let it grow more. Because the mummy is looking ugly. But anyway, this is another setosa variety rondelli that one is the minuta this is rondelli but very similar plant and yet this one here is thriving it uh, doesn't care about the sun or whatever it doesn't get affected at all so that one so this is the same area with that one that one is nicely uh, plumped up now so anyway uh, i'm gonna go take you to my monroe this is my achiveria monroe and some of you would say it's an orange Monroe. Well, this one was just a Monroe before. It's not orange. And then now it turned orange. So probably if I were to sell this, I would say, oh, do you want some of my orange Monroe? But this orange Monroe, this is actually a baby from a mommy who is not an orange Monroe. It's just a Javria Monroe. And the Monroe I showed you earlier, they are uh, siblings. So they came from... Uh, the same mummy and then I'll show you now the next generation of Munro. So from this one, so I've already taken some leaves from this one and propagated it and This is my new Munro. So this is Munro Munro babies and look how beautiful they are So once they grow up and they turn pink, are we gonna call it pink Munro? <laughs> but to me, they're just a Chivria Munro and also same uh, age is this one as well That's that's how they normally look see the difference hang on I'll get you out there. Okay. See look Munro and Monroe, 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 just there in Virgil, right? and that one is um, uh, Laulin, uh, Colorata F. Elinseyana. And anyway, so this one, look, see, this one is from that stock that got attacked by mealybug. So I do believe there is a strain that no matter what you do, it will always just die on you because that's a weak strain. So they were uh, tissue culture plants. And uh, it's no good having a plant uh, that will just sort of do that. And anyway, someone just suggested that this uh, Green Smile, a.k.a. Tomorrowland, could be Mini Gosaong. Mini Gosaong, a Chivria Mini Gosaong. So that's the lighter colored one and this one up the top here. See the difference in the color? So although that one's bigger, this one's smaller, but, oh, that one still. So they do vary in color. Oh, beautiful. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. Mini Gosaong. So I think I'm just going to call this one Mini Gosaong. 
Oh, there's another one here. <laughs> They're multiplying. <laughs> okay, now, but someone also said that one there, which I call Apache magic, which is not an Apache magic, could also be mini gosaong. So anyway, we are just going to see. We're going to find out. Uh, once they grown, I'm going to name them differently. But have you seen a more beautiful crested Papas Rose or Papis Rose? Oh, beautiful. Look at you. Gorgeous. Look at the colors. Even though it's a cloudy, dull day, but look at the colors on that one. Oh, my goodness. See, that just pops over here. And that other one is a cotyledon. Silver waves, variegata. Oh, beautiful plant as well. It's more beautiful on the other side. But anyway, that's it. This is long enough. This is my vloggy thing for today. And I'm just going to inspect my plants after the rain last night, see what damage. Oh, the Sabkorumbosa LAU 030 is beautiful color, but that's being licked by slugs. So I have to do something. And anyway, with the slugs. But anyway, there's less and less. I do come up here every night, check on them. And then anyway, this one now is my Maruba Benitsukasa babies. Look at you. Oh, gorgeous. Okay, so I got a few of them. But they're still small. Well, they're getting bigger. Look at them. Oh, my, oh, this is the biggest one. Maruba Beni Tsukasa. This is the second generation. Now, the first generation, I only ever had one or two uh, Maruba Beni Tsukasa before. And i given it away to a friend of mine. But it died as well. So, now, this next generation, i got a few of them. So, we'll see how they go. And what are you? Fantastic fountain. I hope you grow to be fantastic. Oh, this is the head chop bluebird that i done a video. And look how much they've grown now. Three of them. And look, they all got plenty of babies. And with that one, dried up leaves, we remove that. But the rest is all good. And, okay, lots to do. But anyway... I gotta go see the dentist now. Bye bye for now. What are you? More plants over there that I'm uh, getting rained on. Look at my war dancer here. Look how long the inflorescence. Oh, look how much they are. And then the one that um, the terminal rose plant. See? Oh, look. Oh, it looks like it's not gonna die on me. It looks like it's having a baby. It turned it share well. It changed it it's it has changed its form. I am speechless right now. That's my mom jumbling up my words. Can't believe that. There you go. This uh one is gonna die. I said, Well it's not. It changed form and grown into this. And now it's got these flower stalks as well. That oh more, more over here. Okay. Oh that's the head. Or oh, the mummy is the center. That's the baby. Or oh, that's the mummy. No, that's the baby. Anyway, there's more than one of them. And there's lots of them. And I think they're beautiful. Oh, look at that. Oh, gorgeous. And, oh, look at this. Hang on. <laughs> I have to get away. This is almost, this is about 700 centimeter. Uh, or 70 centimeter. 700. So 700 millimeter or 70 centimeter long. So are you going to go to a meter? That one's the same. That one is, yeah, that's about 720 millimeter. And this one is only about 400. No, 380. So I don't know. Uh, if I take a tape, me a tape measure, uh, you're going to be impressed because you're going to say, she's weird. How can she look at that and see the measurement? Guesstimate. I'm very good with guesstimate measurements. Anyway, that's it. Okay, off I go. Those ones did not get affected by the heat wave.